This is Honshu, where Kyushu can be seen across the narrow straits. Towards the western end of this Japanese main island were nearly 4,000 New Zealanders. They were under the command of Brigadier Stewart, CBE, and many of them are now on their way home. One of their chief duties has been the supervision of the return of Japanese soldiers from Singapore, Rabaul, Indochina and Korea. It's not much of a homecoming for them. They've had all their badges of rank burnt, are inoculated and deloused, and sent off in old army uniforms to inspect the bomb damage, search for their homes and relatives, if they still exist, and resign themselves to a lower standard of living than before. Another gangway, another country. At Littleton, the gangway is steep, but it leads down to a country undamaged by war. After several years away, New Zealanders also come home. What of their return? In wartime, there is much talk of sacrifice and honor and glory, and often that has been about all the compensation heroes have received. At the beginning of this war, New Zealanders felt it should be different. We felt that a soldier deserved the best that could be done for him. That was public opinion. And because this is a democracy, it became government policy. Before Crete and Alamein, Guadalcanal and Bremen, these men were sawmill employees. When they came back, they found a disused sawmill and went to the Invercargill Rehab Office with the proposition. The office liked the idea, financed them, and procured rights over 1,200 acres of maiden bush. Already they're turning out 5,000 feet of timber a day. This is Thames. Some returned men, particularly Navy types, want to make a living from the sea. If Rehab thinks they can make a go of it, they'll finance them with a boat and gear. Over 3,000 have been set up in their own business, from fishing to fish and chip shops. Fishing is a chancy occupation, but a profitable business for those who make a success of it. Over 2,000 have been placed on their own farms. A special sort of farming is dairying for a city milk supply. Rehab thought that Alan McCready had the special knowledge and ability required, and he's now doing well with an up-to-date farm. If you don't like milk, how about fruit juice? Two ex-servicemen in Auckland are bottling apple juice. The juice of five pounds of freshly washed apples goes into every bottle. Apples are crushed and pressed and the product is popular with the public. Quantities are being exported. Another man interested in fruit is Robert Page. With a rehab grant, he's learning how to grow citrus fruits. Over 20,000 grants have been made to enable men and women to find the job they're suited for, to tide them over the settling down period. When Page is fully trained, he will start up on his own, like L.J. Warns, who has nursery gardens in Tauranga. Once an employee in this job, he's now his own boss. Rehab financed this fibrous plaster business, which is now turning out 14,000 square feet a month, much of it for soldiers' homes. When in the Pacific, Stuart Anderson planned his own business. Rehab fixed it for him. Winding armatures is a tricky business. An electrical manufacturer in Hamilton reckoned that if he took the trouble, he could teach a blind man to do it. He did, and Morris Roach, blinded on Crete, assisted by Rehab Loan whilst learning, can now do this intricate job alongside men with their sight. Thomas Collins was wounded at Saloon, and now, after three years training at a disabled serviceman centre, he has a business of his own at home, making power shell jewellery. He is one of nearly 8,000 men assisted with trade training. This attractive job is another man's choice. Laurie Gubb got the agency for several lines in shoes. Rehab loaned the money, and now he has his own business. Kiwi Cabs Christchurch tell their own story. Rehab provided finance and helped them get a license. We 
wonder how they spell Christchurch. As more Kiwis unload, the rehabilitation department knows that many of them will be applying for assistance, but that's good for rehab. These are the raw material of rehabilitation. To be really satisfied, a man must know that he is doing a worthwhile job. Rehabilitation works two ways. It helps the returned servicemen and it helps to build up New Zealand. When a Kiwi back from Italy by way of Japan buys a New Zealand paper the day it's issued, something he hasn't been able to do for some time, he may be forgiven if the news seems topsy-turvy. Sometimes the whole darned world seems upside down. It depends on the point of view. Many wounded Kiwis will remember Betty Webster, who was dietitian on the Monganui. She dreamt of a holiday boating service on Lake Rotuiti. Rehabilitation have helped the dream come true by providing the funds, but it didn't swamp her enterprise and eagerness to overcome difficulties. As labour was unobtainable, she built the cottage and jetty herself. Now she finds she has to have a river oil engineer's ticket. Okay, she's squatting for it. She will justify rehab's fate by getting it too. Another Kiwi is Sink Saggers. He's interested in food, in other people eating it. His midnight customers are a discerning lot. They know the difference between pea pie pud and straight pie with trimmings. We can have Bob. Snow, Sink. What's your morning? Anything good change them, Sandy? Don't touch them. What are you going to have? Poppy and pot, please. Poppy and pot. Cup of coffee? Thanks, Jack. Thank you. What are you going to have, Darkie? I want a nice, um, with, uh, and, and uh, you know, uh, and all over the, um, just give us a cup of coffee. Okay. Rehab built this outfit and gave Sink his start. Now he's on his way. His pie cart is a feature of Civvy Street. <laughs> 